friends. Welcome to Story Behind Podcast. This is the show for people who love hearing a good story and who believe the world could use more positivity. We're the team behind God Updates and God Too, and we hope these weekly short stories will brighten your day. Johnny Carson spontaneously asked an audience member to play the piano in his left gun. Written by Heather Riggleman, read by Adam Staten. David Tolley on Johnny Carson started out as just another audience member, but a last-minute guest cancellation gave him the opportunity to show off his incredible musical talents, and his impromptu piano performance ended up wowing Johnny and the whole crowd. Johnny Carson had prepared to have a well-known pianist perform on the show, but he suddenly found himself in a bind. The pianist had called mere hours before the live show to state he wouldn't be able to, to perform due to an accident with his fingers in a car door. Johnny didn't let that stop him from going live. After all, the show must go on, right? Johnny decided to think outside of the box and explain the situation to the audience. He figured one of the audience members had to have lessons at some point. The Hail Mary to save the show paid off in an unexpected way. Dressed in a Nike t-shirt, jeans, and flip-flops, David raised his hand as Johnny Carson pulled the audience for pianists. Johnny wasn't so sure if David knew what he was doing and whether or not he had the experience, but David took a chance anyway. He even made jokes David obviously would have been better dressed had he known he would be on TV. Taking his cue from Johnny, David set out to impress and playfully had fun showcasing his talent with a few cheeky grins and antics, which included pretending he was moving the tails of a tuxedo before he sat down to wow the audience. What happened next was jaw-dropping. David performed memory from the production of Cats while taking the time to wink at the audience and grin because no one expected him to play so well. Just when it seemed the performance would come to an end, David grinned and pointed at the keys. He earned applause and a few laughs from the audience as he continued to finish up his performance. It's amazing how God directs our steps in life sometimes. One day you're sitting in the audience and the next you're on stage revealing the gifts God gave you, showcasing his glory. Well done, David. Well done. The greatest red carpet you'll ever walk is through your front door. We're Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, marriage and leadership coaches and hosts of the Famous at Home podcast. With a realistic, grace-filled look at the struggles families face today, we cover topics designed to help you become a rock star under your roof, set healthy rhythms between work and home, and build a rock-solid marriage. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Famous at Home on your favorite podcast platform. Candace Cameron Burr slams the Grammys for never showing Christian artists. Written by Mel Johnson, read by Adam Staten. A Candace Cameron Burr comment on Instagram put the Grammys on blast, calling the show out for never highlighting Christian artists. According to reports, 12.4 million people tuned in to watch the 65th Grammy Awards on February 5th, 2023. But according to a comment by Candace Cameron Burr and her Instagram stories, the outspoken Christian celebrity was not one of them. As with any big award show, there was always a ton of buzz around spotting nominees on the red carpet, but Candace pointed out some of the names that never seemed to get any coverage. Not podcast related, but today are the Grammys, and can we see some of the Christian and gospel artists on the red carpet, she asked? Can we see Hillary Scott and Kurt Franklin and Toby Mac and Maverick City, Phil Wickham? I would really like that. Later, Candace Cameron Burr went on to comment some more, pointing out how the show seems to overlook Christian artists entirely. By the way, I didn't watch the Grammys, no interest. They never show the artists I listen to. Just wanted to see red carpet photos of those I mentioned, she said in her Instagram stories. Standing up for her Christian beliefs is something for which Candace is known, and she's not afraid to go against popular opinion. When asked by the Wall Street Journal about whether or not the Great American Family Network would feature LGBT couples and plot lines, Candace outlined the focus for the programming. I think the Great American Family will keep traditional marriage at the core, she said. The comment by Candace 
Kamenberg landed the Christian celebrity in hot water. She faced backlash on social media from various sources, including other celebrities. But Candace didn't back down, and she responded to the controversy with grace. All of you who know me know beyond question that I have great love and affection for all people. It absolutely breaks my heart that anyone would ever think I intentionally would want to offend and hurt anyone, she said. It saddens me that the media is often seeking to divide us, even around a subject as comforting and merry as Christmas movies. Candace went on to express her love for all people because of her faith in Christ. I'm a devoted Christian, she wrote, which means that I believe that every human being bears the image of God. Because of that, I am called to love all people, and I do. If you know me, you know that I am a person who loves fiercely and indiscriminately. My heart yearns to build bridges and bring people one step closer to God, to love others well, and to simply be a reflection of God's huge love for us all. And Candace Cameron Burr went on in her comments to point out that love extended even to those persecuting her for her traditional values. To the members of the media responsible for using this opportunity to fan flames of conflict and hate, I have a simple message for you. I love you anyway, she wrote. To those who hate what I value and who are attacking me online, I love you. Candace went on, saying, To those who have tried to assassinate my character, I love you. To everyone reading this, of any race, creed, sexuality, or political party, including those who have tried to bully me with name-calling, I love you. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. 1 Peter 4.14 But I tell you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. Matthew 5.44 Thank you so much for listening to Story Behind Podcast. We're really glad you joined us for this week's story. To see photos and videos that may have been referenced in this episode, check out the links in the show notes. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe to our podcast and please tell a friend about us. We'd also love it if you'd rate us and leave us a review. It really does help more people find us. Story Behind is a Salem Web Network production. Happy Valentine's Day, Gospel Ranters. We're doing a special Gospel Rant series, February 12th, 19th, and 26th, called What's Love Got to Do With It? So, are you in love? You want to be? You were? God made us to really, really enjoy love. It's a special gift from our gracious creator, and it's largely a brain thing. In the first podcast of the series, we're going to look at the neuroscience behind love. And why does your pulse rate rise even when you're just thinking about them? Why do you get stupid? You know, the you can't think of anything else. Why is falling out of love so brutal? In the second podcast, we're going to look at the history of the thinking about love. Did you know that the Romans were afraid of love? I mean, funny story. In the final podcast, we're going to clear up the massive confusion surrounding agape versus eros. I mean, you've heard that Agape is God's love, and Eros, well, (laughs) you know. But what if we're wrong about that? Are you intrigued? Check it out. So roses are red, violets are not. Some podcasts are for lovers. Give Gospel Rant a shot. See you lovers then.